Pioneering video and performance artist Joan Jonas has always had animal instincts. From the dogs by her side to the bees, whose plight she drew attention to as the U.S. representative to the prestigious Venice Biennale. Now, in a new book of drawings, Jonas explores the animals in the wilds of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Joan Jonas, thank you so much for being here. Let me just ask you to start by your process as you worked your way through the Gardner Museum. Uh, you were an artist in residence, and you took it upon yourself to, to find the animals at the museum? Yes, because I was working with the subject of animals in my work. I chose to to look at the animals in the collection. You grew up with animals, I understand. I'm from, from reading your book, they were part of your childhood. And How would you describe the presence of them in your life? Well, I grew up only with dogs and then turtles from a circus. But um, the dogs were just part of my life, and they were friends. And I've had three different dogs as an adult, so they've continued to be part of my life. And then when I started working with them as an adult, they became part of my work. So in what way did they become part of your work? They, I draw them a lot. I used to, I've drawn some of them over and over and over again. And then others have become part of the performances and part of the videos. Because especially one in, called Zena, who's, um, she's in the gardener in this, in this video of a dog jumping through the hoop. And she just entered into everything that I did. She stepped into the picture, always. I never told her what to do. So as you were walking through the gardener, or spending, did you walk? Did you sit down in front of pieces? How did you do it, by the way? Well, if there's a place to sit down, I like to sit down and look for a long time. But in the gardener, um, no, I walked and I photographed and I walked and I photographed. Well, how does, how does medium uh, affect a depiction of an animal, whether it's fabric or stone, as, you've also, as you also documented? Well, it depends very much on the period. You know, some, for instance, in the tapestry room, the animals are very um, drawn in a very sophisticated way. I have some images of rabbits from the tapestries. The lace, the animals tend to be a little bit more very simple and a little crude, because of the, I think because of the material. You know, you can't make delicate curves and there's no depth, it's flat. The marble pieces, it depends what period it's from. There are many lions in the gardener, which is, I've never drawn lions before. So I was very interested in drawing those lions. I was struck by, in the book, you talk about capturing animals, or, well, capturing animals that we capture, eat, or kill. What's the thinking behind that? It's the truth. I mean, it's just the reality. The, the animals in the gardener are either beasts of burden or animals that are hunted or ca and or captured and um, that we eat. There were very few pets. Well, I know with your work with the sea as well and, and looking at fish, is there a deliberate conversation that you're trying to have with audiences there about our climate and these major issues that we're facing today? Yes. Well, I began with a piece called Reanimation, and it was based on a book by Haldor Laxness, an Icelandic writer, called Under the Glacier. So I began to think at that time about if I'm going to work with the idea of glaciers, they're melting. And so that led me into thinking about what's happening in the environment. And um, he writes very poetically about animals, about bees. And so I began in my Venice um, Biennale work for the pavilion to, I had a room for fish, a room for bees, um, a room for the wind, and so on. And in all cases, thinking about what's happening to those animals or creatures at the moment, at the present time. And then moving off the land is a piece about the ocean and about the creatures that live in the ocean. And um, I was commissioned to do a performance for, by TBA 21, um, to do a performance about the ocean, because the TBA 21 devotes itself um, to funding projects for artists in relation to their idea about saving the ocean, or what is the ocean. Going back to the drawing, I I've watched some of your process, especially using a stick. Why that process? I always say, well, Matisse used a stick. <laughs> but I don't think I got the idea from Matisse exactly. And I try to invent ways of making drawings, and that's why. So I use a, a long stick, because that will produce a different result. And it's a performance for an audience. For Matisse, I think he couldn't reach. And I think maybe for him it was the same thing, that 
by drawing with a long extension of your body, something else happens. You're removing yourself to some degree, to varying degrees, I guess, from the process, and it becomes less tactile, but that's probably... I wouldn't say less tactile. I mean, I can see why you're saying that, but um, whether you draw with your little, little, little stroke with your fingers in your hand, or you draw with your whole arm, or you draw with a stick connected to your arm, it's still tactile. You still have to have a connection feel the connection to the paper or the cloth, whatever it is you're drawing on. Do you feel it more because, again, I'm asking as the non-artist, but I would imagine you have to concentrate more, you have to work more. If you do it um, with people watching you, that's something that I, I, I find that interesting because I have to concentrate in a different way because they're watching me, and so I can't think, is this a good drawing or a bad drawing? But I think that should always be the case anyway. Why do you have to be aware of, or do you want to be aware of the people watching you? We have people watching us right now, and I wasn't even thinking about it until you just mentioned this. Um, well, this is very different. They're not live. I mean, there are people at the cameras and everything, but it's not a live situation with an audience. And, I mean, we're always performing, I guess. Mm. You're surprised when you see the results, I also read. Sometimes, yes, I am. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. You know, I... I uh, the way I work with drawings, I don't see them in my mind before I make them. So it is, you know, a sort of a surprise. Are, are these, are what we look at and what we saw at the Gardener, are they the first version? I only made pretty much, yeah. I mean, there were certain animals that I had a hard time drawing, and I, I'd have to do it over and over again. But there's not another version. This is it for now. And finally, you have had just the most extraordinary last few years with all that you've done, how do you manage that, to, to have all of the attention, to have all of the exhibitions, but still find the time to create? Because I wouldn't have any of those exhibitions or <laughs> if I didn't find time to create. So, you know, as you call it, create, it has to be an ongoing, um, underlying process. It doesn't stop. And the, the work comes out of that, you know. It's not a separate thing. So I have to find, the time is there or else people wouldn't ask me to do my work, you know. <laughs> but the attention, the, the press, oh, the... that. No, I try not to pay attention to it. Actually, you have to really concentrate on what you're doing, what's at hand. I mean, it's wonderful. Of course, we want to communicate. Art is about communication, and that's very important to me, that people see the work and know about it. But um, I can't worry about it. Well, Joan Jonas, it has been such a pleasure. There's, it's been a long time coming that I've been wanting to speak with you. I, I relish the opportunity, so thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. It's been nice to be here.